We are awfully clever. Indeed we are. So I just watched Netflix's super hit show Bridgerton because some of you guys told me to on Instagram and uh, yeah, I'm never listening to you guys again. This show makes me a little mad because I didn't really have any expectations going in, but somehow I was still disappointed. And I mean it, like I didn't know anything about the show. I had never watched a trailer. I didn't know it was based on a book. I didn't know what the story was. I just wanted to know what the fuss was about because I kept seeing it everywhere. So I went in completely blind. I didn't start watching it expecting to love it or expecting to hate it. I just pressed play on the thing. And uh, oh boy. Now, to be perfectly honest, I actually considered quitting after the first episode, but then I didn't because I have this personal rule to never judge an entire show based on its first episode. Because sometimes pilots can be very misleading. Like Spartacus is a great show, but I almost never watched it because it has one of the worst pilots I've ever seen. Same for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And on the other side of things, Revenge is a show with a pilot that's pretty much flawless and brilliantly engaging, but a couple episodes episodes later it starts going off the rails and the show never quite manages to save itself and it sucks for the next four seasons. So I kept going and I was right. I should not have judged this show based on its first episode because it's actually way worse than I initially thought. The thing with Bridgerton is that it came out of absolutely nowhere. Like nobody knew about it and then it came out and it immediately took over social media. People would not shut up about it. Stranger Things was kind of the same. No one even knew what it was. No one really cared about the trailer or anything and then boom it became the most talked about show of 2016 in a matter of days and if you know the internet you probably know that when something like that happens the reactions tend to be very loud and very intense in the case of stranger things people loved it and it sort of became the flagship netflix series due to people being so vocal about it and in the case of like insatiable <laughs> Yeah, that didn't, that didn't go too well. But in the case of Bridgerton, it was really hard for me to read the general consensus on the show. Like, everyone has been talking about it, but I could never figure out whether it was because it's good or bad. So I just had to check it out. Now, here's the first main reason why I find this show so frustrating. A lot of people say that Bridgerton feels new and fresh and innovating because we've never really had this type of show in this era and it feels like bringing back a genre that was dead. And fine, I guess that's fair. I'm not beyond admitting that compared to all of the other romance stories being told on screen since the early 2000s, yeah, Bridgerton kinda stands out for tackling a different time period. Okay, cool. But also... Fuck. Let's not act like this isn't the same as these other shows just because it looks different. Let's not act like Bridgerton isn't a show we've already seen a million times. It has all of the same tropes, all of the same unbearable and lazy cliches, and therefore all of the same problems. Every issue I've ever had with modern romantic tales is perfectly applicable to Bridgerton. It's different only in its look. Every other aspect of the show is as basic basic and generic as it gets. In other words... Same, same, but different, but still same. This show is not nearly as original as people make it out to be. We're gonna dive into that, but first, I wanna give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, Surfshark. Guys, the internet is a really weird place. It kinda freaks me out sometimes. You never know what's out to get you. That's why it's important to make sure you're safe while you're hanging out on the internet. And that's where Surfshark comes into play. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all the data that you send through the internet. In other words, on your devices, Surfshark makes sure that you're Batman and that no one can see you unless you want them to. But that's not all of it. Another great reason to use a VPN is because content from streaming services can be restricted based on what country you're in. With Surfshark, you can solve that problem by simply changing your location. Not only is this good for people who want to keep up with their favorite shows, but it can also be a critical tool for people who live in countries that heavily censor and monitor its citizens. You can just set your location to, I don't know, Canada, and boom, here's Netflix. Now you can watch Stranger Things. That's the power of of Surfshark. And right now, Surfshark is offering a pretty good deal. By using my link in description and promo code NINJA, you will get 83% off your first account. Which essentially means that for something like a couple bucks a month, you can be fully protected. You can be Batman. And you'll get three months for free because they're just nice like that. And in case of any doubt, Surfshark also offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you try it and you don't like it, 
You can simply cancel your subscription, get your money back, and go buy yourself a chocolate bar or something. But there's no risk for you here. So thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to Bridgerton. So Bridgerton is the story of, I guess, Daphne Bridgerton? Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell who's supposed to be the main character in this show. So I'm gonna go with her because it makes the most sense. Anyways, Daphne is a member of the Bridgerton family in London, and she's looking for a husband because women didn't have much else to do back then, apparently. Now, Daphne hates the idea of being forced to marry someone she doesn't love, which is a problem because that's exactly what's about to happen to her. But thankfully, a weird chain of events leads Daphne to meet Simon Bassett, also known as the Duke of Hastings. These two don't necessarily like each other, but they're both in a position where the pressure of getting married is getting a bit excessive. And after an incident at a party that leaves Daphne in a bad situation, Simon steps in and she decides to make a deal with him. They agree to start a fake relationship to trick everyone into believing they are both about to get married so they can get away from their shitty situations and make sure their families leave them alone. But as things go, it looks more and more like Daphne and Simon are getting attached to one another in a way that might transcend their elaborate ruse. It looks like their fake romance may not be all that fake after all. In other words, it's literally the exact plot of To All The Boys I Loved Before, but in the Regency era. I'm not kidding, there's a girl, she's stuck in a situation where a bunch of guys she doesn't like want her, so she fakes a relationship with another guy who has his own motivations to escape the whole thing, but then they fall in love for real and shenanigans happen. It's the same fucking story. You thought I wouldn't notice, Chris Van Dusen? You can't fool me! Now, this is essentially the main story, but there's a bunch of other shit happening in this show. Like, it has about a million subplots. And that is one of my major problems with Bridgerton. This show is incredibly messy. It tries to do way too many things at the same time time and it just doesn't work. Especially because most of those subplots are extremely similar to the main plot, so it all feels very repetitive. Like it relies a bit too much on weird gimmicks to try and make itself interesting, but it's not very good at doing that either. Like the show thinks it's really smart because it takes modern things and adapts them to the time period of the show. For example, it introduces a very blatant Gossip Girl ripoff narrative style with Lady Whistledown. Lady Whistledown in the context of the show is this anonymous writer who writes about what is happening in the show via a newspaper. And it's not that interesting, she just serves as a narrator and an exposition bomb for the audience. And just like in Gossip Girl, sometimes Lady Whistledown will release blasts, little pieces of information that expose characters and their secrets to the entire community in real time. And yes, I know Lady Whistledown was also in the books, but she's used differently and I think the fact that it sounds so much like Gossip Girl is not a coincidence and I just found it tacky and a bit lazy. And honestly, that principle kind of applies itself everywhere here. Between the plot, the Gossip Girl narrative style, and some of the things happening throughout the story, I very quickly came to the realization that Bridgerton literally stole all of the main elements from successful young adult media that came before it, all mushed it in together in the Regency era and hope people wouldn't notice, I guess? The show doesn't have much to offer on its own. At first glance, it's pretty clear that they heavily banked on the aesthetics of the time period to get people to watch it. And you know what? They really went all in with the visuals. I'll give them that. The show looks pretty alright. I mean, sure, it's often ruined by the insanely bland direction. And the show was heavily criticized for being historically inaccurate, even when it comes to the clothes the characters are wearing. But this is a show where black people are just hanging out as dukes and lords and straight up royalty in the 1800s in England? I'm not an expert in history or anything, but it's pretty clear from minute one that historical accuracy is not something this show is interested in. Bridgerton is built like an alternate reality, where things were just different at this time. And while I totally understand why that annoyed a lot of people, it didn't bother me all that much. It's stupid, and there are elements of it that don't work, and if you want to hear specifically why, there are some incredibly well-made videos from other creators like Broey and Khadija that perfectly touch on it, so I'm going to link them down below for you to check them out. But for me, I think I just quickly accepted that this was an alternate alternate reality, and while I didn't necessarily like it, it also didn't stand out to me as much as it did for others. Because no, none of these things were colossal issues compared to the biggest problem I have with Bridgerton, which is... the storytelling.
You chose this for yourself. And this is where we start to dive into the plot itself. And I just gotta say, to get it out of the way, the story of Bridgerton makes very little sense, and overall, it's just not that good. And you know what? I'm okay with it being bad. That's whatever. I can take that. But the part that's frustrating is that a story with a concept as brutally simple as Bridgerton has no right being as insanely illogical as this one is. And I'm dead serious. When I tell you that a majority of aspects of this show are completely incoherent, it's not a joke. First off, the narrative structure in Bridgerton is just painful. It's one of the worst I've seen in a hot minute. The most obnoxious part of it is that the show doesn't really know how to make characters interact with each other properly outside of party sequences. So they take the Gossip Girl meme of having a party in every episode and they crank it up to 11. Every single episode of Bridgerton takes place during some event and every single episode has a scene of character characters discussing very important topics while in the middle of a dance. And I'm not kidding here, if you really take a look at the show, all it is is a bunch of characters endlessly going from one party to another. Sometimes there are several ones in the same episode. It's really dull, and after a while it just kind of feels like you're watching the same episode of television over and over again. Women discuss things in the living room while drinking tea, people in general interact at parties, and I guess men can only have meaningful full conversations while punching the fuck out of each other in a ring? Wait, who wrote this again? It's all an endless repetition of characters you know, introducing characters you don't know to another character you may or may not know and will probably never see again, and you watch them exchange their fake politeness while characters who are supposed to be in love stare at each other from a distance without talking and everyone is fighting about getting married all the time, nobody has any other center of interest, and fuck me, this show is so fucking fucking boring. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know this is really early in this video to get angry, but I just have to get it off my chest. Bridgerton is so bland, it's so incredibly boring. It took me so long to finish most of the episodes because I just couldn't keep my focus on it, and it happened more than once that I just paused the show midway through an episode to go do something else because I just, it was putting me to sleep. I had to constantly fight the urge to grab my phone out of boredom. It took me four hours to watch the finale and it's like 50 minutes long. It's that boring. 70% of this show is just characters having pointless conversations that have no impact on the plot. It's just people standing around, talking about shit that doesn't matter, and whining. The show's eight episodes long, but it felt like 15. Bridgerton is so unbelievably slow, and usually that's not a problem for me. I appreciate stories that allow themselves to be slower and take their time in order to focus on characters or to flesh out an element of of the plot, but that's not what this show does. This show is slow as hell, but for no reason. It's just wasting your time. There's so much useless bullshit you can take out of this show. I'm pretty sure you could cut it down to four or five episodes, and you know what? It would be better for it. It really does itself a disservice here, because all of the flaws in the show started sticking out even more after a while, because there isn't much else to focus on. You want an example? I got one for you. The music in Bridgerton is very distracting. You see, the show has this gimmick of taking modern radio hits and turning them into operas and symphonies from the era, and then it just plays in the background of a scene or during a dance or whatever. And while I admit that it was fun at first, the show kind of overdoes it and everything else is so boring that I couldn't not think about it. Like yeah, I chuckled when I recognized Thank You Next by Ariana Grande in the first episode and I thought it was a clever joke, like it's super meta. But then a couple scenes later they do it again with a Maroon 5 song and it got annoying very quickly. Mostly because I realized that it wasn't supposed to be a clever meta joke. They're dead serious about it, and I don't think it's as cool as they think it is. And by the time episode 3 came around and I heard Bad Guy by Billie Eilish, it just started to make me roll my eyes. And I like Billie Eilish a lot, but that's not an excuse. Also, another element of the show that just made me want to die by Harakiri is the dialogue. If you were truly courting me, you'd buy out every florist in town. If I were truly courting you, I would not leave flowers every five minutes alone with you. In the drawing room. Oh my god. The dialogue in this show is just really annoying most of the time. It started to bother me when I realized an overwhelming majority of the conversations between characters in this show only serve as exposition. Like most of it is literally just characters stating out loud what is currently happening in the show. I guess because the writers don't think you'll get it otherwise. Like they don't think you can just understand the story so they feel the need to have characters constantly dictate to the audience what the plot is and what everyone 
everyone thinks about it in real time. And the rest of the dialogue is essentially just people gossiping about things you don't give a fuck about. The banter amongst the characters is so uninteresting. Maybe it's because the characters themselves are not all that compelling. I mean, some of them are funny, kind of, but like, I didn't give a fuck about anyone. I wasn't really invested in any of them. But the funniest thing to me, and by far the most hilarious flaw Bridgerton has, is a thing that not a lot of people talk about, but one that is present in a lot of bad shows, and I like to call that thing artificial charisma. You see, some TV shows are just naturally charismatic. Hell, some shows only survive due to people appreciating the natural charisma of a few characters even when the writing went to shit. Don't look at me like that, you know I'm talking about you. Other shows are not necessarily charismatic, and that's perfectly fine, not every show needs to be. There are some exceptional shows out there that aren't really charismatic, they're just crazy good, that's just not a part of what it is. But to me, there's nothing more cringeworthy than a show with no charisma that seems to really be convinced that it has charisma. A show that tries way too hard to have a personality that's just not there. You know what I mean? I don't know about you, but it's the type of cringe that will attack me to my very core, and Bridgerton is the latest offender of that trend. The show really wants you to think the characters are charismatic, but it never feels authentic. Because you can't exactly force charisma, you either have it or you don't. That's why artificial charisma never works. You can't convince me that your show is captivating if it's not being captivating. And unfortunately for Bridgerton, it all feels very forced. And this is where I finally need to talk about our two leads. Daphne and Simon are one of the worst main couples I've seen in a show in a very long time. For several reasons, I'm gonna touch on that later, but I really gotta say it. These two are really lame. Aside from the fact that they're incredibly good looking, there isn't much of anything about them. For starters, Daphne is an awful character, like really awful. The show keeps telling you she's interesting, but it never really shows you that. She's actually quite boring and whiny. And I'm conflicted because I really like Phoebe Dinever, who plays her, she's really good in the role and she has moments where her performance is genuinely powerful. But the way her character is written just puts me to sleep. And then after a while, she just becomes really irritating. Like Daphne's thing is that she's trying to stand up for herself and get a little control over her life, which is a cool arc in theory, but nothing ever really happens with that. She just kind of floats through the story for the entire show. So in the end, Daphne just comes across as a character that spends her entire existence complaining and it's just not interesting. Simon is the the only character with any presence that feels somewhat candid in the first two episodes or so. But then he becomes just as boring as the others, so it doesn't matter. In my opinion, Simon is the perfect example of artificial charisma. The show tries so hard to make him cool that he ends up having the opposite effect. But out of everyone, I'd be inclined to say he's the best character in the show, but that's not really saying much because I still hate his guts. Frankly, I think Bridgerton just doesn't have a chance to work if he's not here, which does not bode well for the show because of Apparently, he's not coming back in future seasons. That was a whole thing on social media in recent weeks. But again, it's all pretty foggy because Simon is not a good character. Roger Jean Page is fucking amazing in the role, so he gives him somewhat of a presence, but that doesn't change the fact that Simon is just your typical too cool for school male protagonist you've already seen a million times. Every single one of his character traits are cliches that have been done better in other stories. There's nothing unique about him. Tell me if you've heard this before. He's a lonely bad boy who is emotionally unavailable. All the girls want him, but he wants none of them. He scoffs at the basic bitches of society. But then one girl comes along and changes everything, challenges him and changes his perspective. And by the power of love, or in the case of Bridgerton, by the power of a screenwriter who could not develop proper romantic tension between the two main lovers, the bad boy learns to open up his heart and he turns good. But he's too afraid of tainting the soul of the good girl who has forever marked his heart. And so he distances senses himself from her by fear of corrupting her pureness with his darkness. And he makes her believe that he never cared for her and it's all very tragic. Even though we all know they're gonna end up together, so it feels like the show is just wasting your time. But in the end, he chooses his heart, returns to his beloved, blah blah blah. You get my point, we all know the story. Simon is the embodiment of the bad guy gone good trope in every romantic comedy ever, but he just doesn't wear a biker leather jacket because it's 1813 and that wasn't a thing yet. And if I'm being completely honest, his arc 
is so stupid. His whole thing is that he doesn't want to get married and have children because he wants his bloodline to end with him out of spite for his father, who was an asshole who just wanted power and glory and treated him like shit when he was a kid. And in essence, that would be a great theme to explore as an affront between him and his father who would be powerless in the future of his bloodline. But it doesn't work because his father is dead. So why? There's no conflict because the antagonist is already gone. So Simon is just clinging to this very stupid vendetta that makes him look like an immature child. He's so petty and whiny and after a while you just get tired of watching him drown himself in his own self-pity. And the fact that this unbelievably lame-ass plotline of his becomes the driving force behind the issues between him and Daphne is just ridiculous. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say it. I just don't buy these two together. I understand that they're hot and people are just really excited to watch them have sex on the floor or whatever, but you can't tell me their relationship is well written. It's just not. The change in their dynamic is so sudden and jarring that I genuinely thought I'd missed an episode for a second. Now, okay, to be fair, their little plan of faking being in love so that people will leave them alone is established well enough, but they're really annoyed by each other at first. They don't like each other, and I thought it was all building up to something that would justify them starting to fall in love, but it never happens. They start liking each other for no reason. There's nothing organic that comes to initiate the change in their relationship in a way that feels natural. It comes out of nowhere and it's never really justified. One minute they don't like each other and then you just start randomly getting these scenes where Daphne dreams about Simon and Simon just stares at Daphne in admiration in a way that's a little too creepy if you ask me. But why? It comes out of nowhere. After a few episodes I just realized that the only reason Daphne and Simon fall in love is because the story needs them to. There's really nothing there. And I mentioned earlier that the show tries to hard to be charismatic and I just gotta say that Simon and Daphne's relationship is by far the funniest example of that. I think the dialogue between the two is supposed to be witty and playful and snarky but it's just really boring and like I said it's not that they don't have chemistry. I mean it's not the best chemistry in the world but they work together well enough in that sense but it's just the way they're written is so lame and it's only made worse by the fact that the writers seem to think their banter is so cool that scenes with the two of them just go on forever. And it's not clever or intricate or anything, like they just whisper to each other in an isolated corner of a party, obnoxiously mocking people around them and chuckling to themselves, and it's so stupid. It just makes them look like petty eight-year-olds on the playground at school talking shit about other kids, and it makes it painfully cringe. <laughs> they do not even know him. They do not need to know him. And besides the fact he's a prince. Well, surely you cannot be surprised. You know how this works, Daphne. Was it not you who wrote the book on the very subject? <laughs> And there's also that absolutely awful sequence where Simon quite literally explains to Daphne what masturbation is. Yeah, because it's part of Daphne's character that she doesn't know anything about sex and no one ever taught her. But like it's presented in a weird way. It's very clear that the scene is meant to be hot and full of sensual tension, but it's just really awkward. You do touch yourself. Boy, if you don't shut your mouth! I'm sorry, but these two just do not work. Even their pseudo breakup in episode 3, where Simon makes Daphne think he doesn't care about her or whatever, it all feels very empty. And I couldn't really give a shit about it, because the show is not very clear with its timeline, and it feels like they've only known each other for a few days by that point. So Daphne's extremely emotional reaction feels really out of place. What, are we supposed to believe she's madly in love with him because he told her to masturbate? I don't get it. Like, she's so violently heartbroken that she starts hallucinating Simon in the middle of social situations. It's really weird, and the way the show frames Daphne's feelings for Simon's makes it seem like she's only in love with him because she thinks he's hot. There's never anything in the story that suggests otherwise. Every context in which she ever thinks of him is purely based on sexual attraction, which is fine, but then as a romance it doesn't work because there's not much of an emotional connection between the two. It never
never feels genuine. Even their wedding scene is awfully awkward. I saw a lot of people online talking about how sweet it was, and I don't understand how anyone can find it romantic. It's such a strange sequence, they look like they're panicking the entire time. It's really funny. I don't know, I feel like a wedding scene played off that seriously should not make me laugh. But it's a bit after the wedding that I realize what makes their relationship so irritating to me. The big problem with Daphne and Simon is that they spend the entire show having the same arguments over and over again. And they never really solve any of them, even by the end of the show. You've barely been able to look me in the eye. Because I could not bear witness to the misery I have caused you. You did not. I am the one who trapped you into this marriage. I trapped you. Oh my fucking god. Look. I like a good romantic story, okay? I'm human, I have a heart, it's endearing to see two people fall in love. I definitely get the appeal, and I'm a big fan of some romantic storylines in certain shows and movies. If there is a good romance on screen, I will enjoy it. But I'm sorry, Simon and Daphne fucking suck. A hundred percent of the problems they have in this show happen for the one and only reason that they just won't communicate. The entire conflict they have before, during, and after the wedding would be solved in three seconds if they just talked to each other. But they never do. Whenever they argue, they do this really annoying thing where they just speak in codes and metaphors and they're just being super vague for no reason and they never actually say what they want to say. And then they get angry and storm out of the room without finishing their conversation and then the cycle repeats itself, it never ends. And it's only after their wedding that they finally have the most basic of conversations just to tell each other, hey, I actually like you. And then it's resolved and they immediately have sex. But this, surprisingly, is where things get even worse. After that incredibly stupid wedding episode, the big conflict of the show becomes the fact that Daphne is now married to a man who doesn't want children. Which sucks for her because it's mentioned earlier in the show that she dreams of being a mother. So what's her solution to fix that problem? Well, she sexually assaults Simon in an attempt to have his children against his will. I'm not kidding. Yep, this is what we're dealing with in this show. And then, if that's not enough, she gaslights him and makes him believe that he's the villain in this situation because he said he could never give her children, which she interpreted literally because she doesn't know how children are conceived, and so, instead of acknowledging that it was a misunderstanding, she just decides that he'd lie to her, and so she literally gets her revenge by raping him, even though despite the turn of events, she agreed and insisted to marry him under the circumstances. Because yeah, by the way, she's the one who pushed him into a marriage even after she was told he could not give her children. Is this really the person we're looking up to here? We're supposed to root for Daphne? She's a fucking monster. And yes, I know that the scene in the book is way worse, like in the book Simon is asleep when she rapes him, but one, that doesn't make it better, it's still rape, and two, this sequence doesn't even have an impact on the plot at all! Seriously, if you take that scene out of the show completely, the outcome of the story is going to be the exact same. Nothing changes. So why did you put it in? Of all the things you could have left out, you knew the scene was a problem, that's why you decided to change it in the show in an attempt to make it less awful. But why didn't you just cut it out? I don't understand that choice, it's so dumb. Especially because the writers are not at all interested in giving Daphne any accountability and they never acknowledge how profoundly fucked up what she did is. Because yeah, a few days later when Simon refuses to have sex with Daphne again after what she did to him, she gets mad at him for not trusting her even though she just sexually assaulted him. He has no reason to trust that she won't do it again, especially because she has showed no signs of remorse for doing it the first time. And when she finds out that she's not pregnant from raping him, she's actually angry at him. And she genuinely believes that Simon Simon is the one who needs to ask for forgiveness. Girl, are you good? Do you need a Kit Kat? And it irks me even more later because starting in episode 7, Daphne's character does a complete 180 and she just turns into this heartless, inconsiderate asshole. And she's just cold and rude to everybody now. She was already whiny during the first portion of the show, but towards the end it's like the writers decided to double down on it out of nowhere. Her character goes through such a sudden change and it makes no sense in my head. It's like she suddenly becomes a villain, but the show doesn't seem to realize that. And 
and you're still supposed to be rooting for her? It's so weird, like literally, she spends the last few episodes of the show gaslighting the fuck out of Simon at every turn and making him feel like shit every time they have a conversation. And it becomes so excessive that it's just confusing that the writers don't seem to realize how horrible she is. Like in episode 7, Daphne tells Simon that from now on, she wants to live apart from him. They're married and they can't just undo that, so from this moment, they are to only be married in name and live their own lives separately and each is to mind their own business. Okay, fine. But then, in the very next scene, when she walks by Simon in their home and he ignores her because he's minding his own business, she's actually offended. Even though that's exactly what she told him to do. These two just don't make any fucking sense. I am tired of pretending. And I cannot continue acting as if I... As if I do not love you. No one is asking you to! You're doing this to yourself! They're awful. I hate them. I hate them so much. They're the dumbest on-screen couple I have seen in a while. Simon is a deplorable dumbass, Daphne is a manipulative fucking monster and a rapist, and their relationship is completely devoid of any coherence. I haven't read the book, but god damn it, when people say they're even worse in the source material, it just hurts my soul. I hate them. Oh, and obviously, after all of that, it's the finale, so of course they need to be forced into a happy ending. They do not deserve. So Daphne suddenly changes her mind after Rain gives her an orgasm for some reason and now she's okay with Simon not wanting children. There's never a thought process or a progression in the episode that explains why she changes her mind. She just does because it's the finale. So they reconcile and they have sex for exactly 24 seconds and Simon lets himself ejaculate inside of Daphne and then they have a baby and that's it. That's the end of their story. I know it sounds like I just made that up but that's really what the ending is. I'm not kidding. So Daphne gets what she wants. She's quite literally rewarded for what she did to Simon, and Simon's happy ending is essentially just being gaslighted into having a child. And his arc with his dad never really comes full circle, because the end of the story has nothing to do with him resolving that. Not only does Daphne never apologize for what she did to him, the show itself never recognizes what she did to him as something bad, and instead paints Simon as the one who was too damaged to make things work. He's the one who has to ask for forgiveness and work through his issues. So yeah. My point here is that Daphne is the villain of this show and you can't change my mind. And also, to all the people who told me to watch Bridgerton because it's fun and quirky, um, quick question. Are you guys okay? Because I'm not sure we watched the same show here. There must have been a mistake. Bridgerton is not fun. It has a nice aesthetic, I'll give it that, but what exactly is fun about this show? I'm really asking because I don't see it. Out of the entire show, there is one scene that I genuinely liked. One. It's a flashback in episode 2 where this woman tells a young Simon about how she had to face an unfair world, and when she realized that her only way to navigate that world was to do it on her own terms, she decided to turn herself into the scariest person she could be to protect herself. When I was a girl, some centuries ago, I was afraid even of my own reflection. I entered a room and attempted to dissolve into the shadows. I knew I would have to step into the light someday and I could not very well be frightened. So, instead, I made myself frightening. It's actually a really nice scene that shows a tiny little spark of good writing, and since it was in episode 2, I thought, oh, okay, this was pretty nice. Maybe the show gets better as it goes and the pilot was just a fluke. But then the flashback ends and no, it, does, it doesn't get better. Eloise is another character that annoyed me a lot. I think people like her because she's sassy and shit, and to be fair, I actually like the theme that's given to her character and how the classic path of life that is so coveted is something she's not interested in at all, and she just wishes to get more out of life, to be able to do something more. And that's cool, I think a lot of people can relate to that, even within the context of modern society. But her character is so whiny and condescending and so unbelievably one known that the show accidentally ends up giving her that I'm not like other girls type of vibe that is just really irritating. Her only personality trait is being edgy, and every single one of her lines is either a complaint or a snarky comment that aims at insulting someone. One. You wish to follow your heart, and I wish to nurture my mind. It would actually have to be interesting for me to bother spying on you. Perhaps you should like to move a picture. You should be grateful. The only thing I'm grateful for is that I am not you, nor will I ever be. 
On second thought, continue. You will frighten away the Duke, the Prince, and any other eligible suitor clear across the North Sea. And you would wish that upon me, would you, sister? To get Mama's attentions focused on you instead of me, I might. And we never really dive more into her character or her arc, so after a while she just comes across as an entitled child who complains about everything, and it's impossible to take her seriously. Like, she's kind of the Dudley Dursley of this show. Aside from that, she has this subplot where she spends most of the show trying to figure out the identity of Lady Whistledown, which is by far the most uninteresting part of the show. But yeah. And the other characters are no better, by the way. There's very little to get attached to here. The writers put absolutely zero effort in trying to make anyone interesting. She's annoying. She's annoying. He bothered me way more than he should have. He's so fucking intense in every single moment he's on screen, I couldn't stand him. He spends the entire show just yelling at people. She's annoying. You can take this guy out of the show completely and nothing in the plot would change. He's annoying. He was actually cool. Annoying. Boring. Annoying. Who are you? I don't even remember you. I just watched this show. Who are you? Boring. Boring. She was fine. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy twice. Boring. She has the only good scene in the entire show, so I won't give her shit. She was kind of badass. She was cool too. These two can die in a hole. I hate them. I'm going through them very quickly because there isn't much to say about any of them. Mostly because we never really learned anything about any of them, and I don't remember any of their names anyway. Characters in Bridgerton are just kind of there. They don't really matter. Some characters are present in every episode, but they never have a story. They literally just exist in the show and they take a significant amount of screen time to just do nothing. None of the characters are really developed except maybe for Simon a little bit, but that's really not saying much because again, aside from Roger Jean Page being very good looking and charismatic, Simon doesn't have much of a personality. And as a result of the characters being so dull, it's very hard to care about anything that's happening in the plot. Like for example, the show tries so hard to build a sense of mystery around the identity of Gossip Girl. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, Lady Whistledown. But it's so inconsequential and detached to the main story that it's impossible to give a fuck. Like, I wasn't trying to figure it out or anything. I wasn't trying to solve it. It's honestly one of the least engaging mysteries I've ever seen. And then they reveal who it is in this Sherlock Holmes type sequence at the very end. And you can tell they think it's an insane revelation. But again, it's not interesting at all. So when you finally find out who it is, you're just like, okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. In fact, that's kind of a problem with the entire show. Bridgerton brutally lacks tension, but in a way that's almost distracting. The show plays everything in an extremely dramatic way, but it feels like it has no stakes, so it doesn't matter. There's this moment halfway through the show where Daphne's brother sees Simon and Daphne making out, and he stops them by punching Simon in the face, and then, out of nowhere, he claims the only way to fix the situation is for him to have a jewel to the death with Simon at dawn. Which is so fucking funny and random. And it's never really explained why. You're just supposed to accept that's what it is? You're just gonna kill each other now? Okay. The show never bothers to make it make sense, but it treats it all so dramatically that I guess you're supposed to feel tension, but I was just really confused. No one saw them kiss except for him. They could just all agree to like never talk about it. Why do they have to kill each other for it to to be fixed, especially because then he says to another Bridgerton brother whose name I do not remember or give a fuck about that he needs to stand as his second, whatever the fuck that means, and that if he wins, he will need to leave the country and pass the estate over to him. And I just don't understand how that solves the problem, but the scene is so frantic and intense, I think you're supposed to feel a sense of urgency, but the entire plot point is so incoherent and so devoid of any stakes that I just frown the entire time. Because they never explain why! And they literally tell you that the outcome of the duel will have no impact on the state of their affairs, so it has no point! God, this show is so dumb! And just to double down on it, there's another plot point that follows quickly where the problem becomes that somebody did see Simon and Daphne kiss. And that was a much better way of building tension because now the Bridgerton name is actually at risk. But instead of focusing on that at First, we spend the whole episode going through the lame buildup of this trial by combat bullshit that is rendered completely useless like five minutes before it even happens. Because the entire tension of that sequence relies on the audience believing one of the two is actually going to die. But like, if you're above the age of three, you know they're gonna be fine. This show clearly doesn't have the guts 
to kill main characters even if it serves the story, so why are we here? Who wrote this? And if you still don't believe me when I say this show is overly dramatic, episode 5 has this hilariously dramatic storyline where Daphne and Simon attempt to get married, but they're not granted the license to do so. So then this lady comes and she tells them, look, all you have to do to get the license is to go to the queen and tell her that you're in love and then you'll be able to get married. It's like really simple and I thought it would be all fine but somehow the show paints it like doing that is an insurmountable challenge for them and it's all really intense. Just take a look at how dramatically that scene plays out. Tell her you are in love. Plain and simple and true. You can do that, can you not? Hey, you okay? Do you need a Kit Kat? They're like shaking in fear as if this is the most daunting challenge they'll ever have to face. But why? It's so simple. They just have to tell the queen one thing. That's the easiest fucking thing for them. And then they do it in like three seconds and they get married in the very next scene. So why did you have to make it look like the entire world was on the verge of collapsing? Who wrote this? The show is so desperate to build tension and to make the audience believe that big dramatic things are taking place, but when you actually take a real look at the story, you realize that nothing really happens in Bridgerton. It's quite uneventful, so they really have to reach to attempt to find tension by making small problems look monumental or by pulling plot twists with no meaning out of nowhere. I think the funniest of those was in episode 5 when they just randomly reveal the king has Alzheimer's, but it's completely pointless because we just met him in that same scene and then we never see him again. So why is that sequence even there? It has no purpose. You cannot build tension with Bridgerton because the one thing people ever talk about in this show is getting married. That's it. And don't get me wrong, it's not even that marriage is a bad theme to explore in a show, but Bridgerton is literally just eight hours of people complaining about getting married. That's the entire show. You can't really create a sense of dread in life or death situations or a sense of mystery when the only thing you ever talk about is weddings. I'm sorry, that makes no sense. I've got the perfect example for you to make my point, especially when it comes to the show pulling random twists out of its ass for the sake of drama. And that example is the entire arc of this girl. I don't remember her name and I don't care, so we're just gonna call her, I don't know, Brenda. Brenda has this storyline where she gets pregnant from a guy who left for war, but they weren't married, so it's like really bad. And now she has to get married before people find out she's pregnant or before the nine month timeline becomes unbelievable. And at first she doesn't wanna do it, but when she receives a letter from her baby daddy that says he doesn't want anything to do with her and her baby, she changes her mind and agrees to the idea. But then the show doesn't really know what to do with her, so to to try and amp up the drama, the writers play the random plot twist game with her. Plot twist! Brenda suddenly refuses to have to marry someone she doesn't love, so to get out of it, she decides to make herself a special tea that will get rid of the baby. And she drinks it and faints, and now she's not pregnant anymore. But right after that, plot twist, her baby daddy returns from the war. But wait, plot twist two minutes later! That's not actually her baby daddy, that's her baby daddy's brother, and he came to announce to her that her baby daddy was killed in battle. But he did write her letters to tell her that he loved her and the baby. And plot twist! Brenda finds out that the original letter of rejection she got was forged by her guardian in an attempt to force her into a marriage here in London. So now Brenda is really sad and she feels guilty for sipping on that tea. But plot twist! It's revealed that the brother has come here to offer to marry Brenda so that her and the baby can be provided for and safe in society. But Brenda turns him down because she's not pregnant anymore so there's no point and so he leaves. But right after that Plot twist! Yeah, it's still not done. It turns out that the tea didn't work and Brenda is still pregnant. So now she's back to square one and has nobody to marry, so she asks the brother of her baby daddy to come back and accepts to marry him, and then she leaves with him. <sighs> 
Also, just to give you an idea of how exhausting it is, five of the six plot twists I just mentioned happen in the same episode. It sucks because the themes behind her storyline are very interesting, and it could serve as a great showcase of how women at the time were trapped by society standards in a way that felt like a metaphorical prison, but the writer's choice to turn it into an awkward soap opera with big twists just for the sake of having drama and tension is really lame, and it undermines the message quite a lot in my opinion. Even the humor of the show falls flat most of the time. I mean, okay, I'll admit that episode 5 has one joke that actually made me laugh. And I think, to finish, I will say that it's also kind of weird to me that the season finale is by far the most boring episode of the entire show. It's really slow, and nothing really happens, and the show very clumsily attempts to resolve conflicts, but not in a way that makes sense. Oh, and then this one character that you barely ever see in the show suddenly gets murdered off screen, and I think it was supposed to be a shocking twist as well. But I just don't care about this guy, he was never important. I don't even remember his first name. Actually, I don't think we ever learn what his first name is. And that's not me having a bad memory here. Even the actors on the show don't know what his name is. Her mom, Portia and uh, Lord Featherington. Don't know do we even know my dad's first name. Dad, played by Ben Miller. <laughs> but the final straw comes at the very end when the show attempts to set up a season two by making this fucking guy say that now he doesn't want to be in love. He says that he finally figured out how to find the perfect wife and that it's by finding someone he doesn't actually love because love makes everything complicated. And the show hints that it's gonna be the main storyline of season two and it made me laugh because it's the the exact same arc as Simon. It's literally the same thing. Now he's gonna be the lonely bad boy who doesn't want any girl, but then he's inevitably gonna meet a girl who's going to make his heart beat again or whatever. So not only did you just spend the whole season watching the same episode of TV repeating itself over and over again, the show also lets you know that the next season is gonna be the exact same. No thank you, my ninja. I'll just watch Death Note again. Bridgerton is such a bad show. I don't understand how it's so popular. It's been such a success for Netflix that they renewed the show not for one, not for two, but for three more seasons. I don't get it. It's apparently the most successful show Netflix has ever produced. That genuinely breaks my brain. Like, okay, it looks fine. The performances are good for the most part. Again, Phoebe Dinevar is a fucking light bulb of talent, but it has absolutely awful writing and overall it's just a really generic, repetitive and uninteresting story. It's a show about selfish people being selfish and complaining constantly in the most boring ways imaginable. Like I've seen shows with bad characters, and that's a problem on its own, but I've rarely seen a show with so many characters that somehow manages to make all of them annoying and unpleasant. It's crazy. Objectively speaking, it's not the worst show ever, but boy it was a real challenge to get through it. And knowing that every season is going to focus on different characters, I'm really curious to see how people will respond to the following seasons. I have my theory that something must have happened with Roger Jean Page behind the scenes, because I really doubt they would just let go of a character that is just so popular. And I'm sorry, but the excuse they give of, well, his story was just over, kind of reminds me of when people ask Ruby Rose why she left Batwoman, and all she says is, we just felt like her story had reached a natural conclusion. Yeah, sure, Ruby. The CW is very famous for letting stories end. Just ask the Winch Chester Brothers. But either way, Netflix took a huge gamble here, and I have no idea how that's gonna work out for them. But one thing is absolutely sure, I will not be sticking around to find out, because Bridgerton is not it. But it's still better than Emily in Paris. Maybe I'm better. Do they know better? They like me now way more than ever. Fickle IG, they think they're clever. Flexing like they're Kylie Jenner. Red lightsaber, slash that shit like young Darth Vader Get on my ship like Luke Skywalker I think I'm done Miss me when I'm gone Bury on when I run Han Solo with my gun I think I'm done Miss me when I'm gone Bury on when I run Han Solo with my gun